Hi everybody, all my followers, everybody on YouTube, welcome to another video. Okay, so this video today is on a 2007 Honda Accord. And uh, I believe this is the 2.2 CDTI, maybe. It doesn't really matter for what we're going to capture here on this video. Uh, so this car came to me uh, with the following problem. Which is that problem. Okay, the VS8 light. Um, so there's no ABS light. Uh, the only lights that stay continually, continuously on is that uh, yellow triangle and the VSA light, which also pops up um, on that uh, multifunction screen. But yeah, it's the VSA light. Okay. So. Um, I've diagnosed, I've scanned the car, it's going to do it again. And um, I will show you exactly what it comes up with. Okay, so the fault that it comes up with Is the following actually there is two faults on it but they are both related so this is the two faults okay 66-1 84-1 they are both uh, related and is the brake pressure sensor failure um now um just to confirm we can go to live data and as soon as let's gonna scroll it down up to the brake there is so it comes up with a na because obviously the pump is not getting um the, it's not getting readings from the uh, readings from the sensor now, um, this is a quite um, common problem uh, on the cars fitted with, let me see if I can move this out of the way a little bit. Hang on. So, what we have here, guys, is a, a second hand replacement pump for it. So, these pumps. Uh, what happens on these pumps is, uh, in an attempt to save space maybe to make it a little bit easier i don't know um ate uh, decide to fit the pressure sensor the brake pressure sensor inside the unit so the brake pressure sensor when you split the this uh, block from the module itself from the electronic module it's gonna the brake pressure sensor is inside here now i'm not gonna open this pump to show you all that or anything like that but i'm gonna leave a link in the description below for a video that I've done on a Volvo, uh, where I was, uh, uh, on that particular car, um, the, the, the data on the ABS unit, it needs to be, uh, the unit, okay, on the Volvos, the unit, ABS unit, is part of the immobilizer system. So, the, the there is some, so the data on this pump, it needs, if you replace the pump, you need to copy the data from the EEPROM, uh, from one unit to the next uh, on this car on these Ondas you don't have to so we can just straight replace the pump uh, the unit and we'll be fine um, now uh, on that car the video uh, it was to show you how to transfer the the, the, the data and all that sorts but but um, on that video I, I have the units actually opened and you can actually see uh, the inside of the pump, I will take you through the the the, um, the pressure sensor in there, so you can have is is the very similar unit, so you'll have a better idea uh, when we talk here about the pressure sensor. You're gonna have a better idea where it is, what it is, and 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 all 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 that. Now the the what usually fails on that sensor is not the sensor itself that fails, is the connections between the contact point and the sensor itself. There's a kind of a flexi cable that connects the four uh, connection points 
uh, into the sensor itself that is down below. And is that flexi cable with the vibrations, with the temperature, uh, temperatures, you know, cycles, hot and cold, hot and cold, and they crack. And that's why it fails. Um, those sensors to, to repair that uh, cable, that flexi cable, you kind of need microscopic soldering. Is 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 it can be really complicated to do it. Um, so yes, yeah, so you have a few options to resolve this issue. Uh, there's a few. If you Google, you'll find it. There's a few companies out there that do repair these these units. So you send your unit back, and they will get repaired. They will send it back to you. Uh, most of them, most of them, with a lifetime warranty, which is absolutely brilliant. In this case, the guy didn't want to go that route. He just wanted to fit a second-hand unit. So I bought a second-hand unit. Fingers crossed, this one is good. So we're going to try it. Um, and yes, we're going to replace this unit. Um, it is a little bit awkward to get to the unit in this car. Uh, but we, we're going to try. So, as you can see, we have loads of things to remove to get to it it's not going to be a easy job uh, but it is what it is um, I'm just a little bit concerned about this one about the air conditioning um, I'm going to try to get this done without moving that one out of the way but we'll see we'll see what we can do um, so yeah we're going to start to strip things down and try to get down to the pump. Okay guys, um, I think I'm going to go in a different route. Uh, so this is the second hand pump I got. And just to show you this. So to open this pump, all you need to do is remove two screws, two bolts. There's one here and one there. The motor comes off and then the electronic side just comes out of there. This is the pressure sensor here. And what it fails, as I was saying, is usually these four contact pads at the top. There's a flexi cable from here that goes down below to the sensor itself. And it's that flexi cable that tends to break. Now, we could just replace this sensor. I don't know where to get them from, to be fair with you. Um, and uh, I've opened the pump for a simple reason. That I might going to go a different approach on to changing this. So what I'm going to do is, rather than try to remove the entire unit, uh, I'm going to try to take the headlight out. And I'm going to take, as you can see, I'm going to take the pump, separate this, remove the block, this aluminum block. There's a name for this, which I can't remember now, uh, which is the one that contains the pressure sensor. And just put that new block in there, put everything back together and we should be good to go so I don't need to fiddle too much about it hopefully it will work uh, we'll see how it goes okay so before we continue I'm gonna try to empty the oil in the in the reservoir and I'm opening uh, this first breeder the front right breeder now I've always get scared, uh, not scared, but I always get nervous when I'm trying to release these ones because the the likelihood of they be completely seized and they snap is so high that's that's unbelievable, guys. So a few tips on this. Um, the first thing I do put a little bit of uh, I use this one double D forty. Put a little bit of that leave it to soak uh, to penetrate and then I know yes we're gonna damage the the top of the bleeder but just hammer it down a little bit that helps to release and then use one of these ones uh, don't use the multi-point because the chance are the multi-point is gonna snap it's gonna slip these ones they will not slip um, when we when you start don't put it all the way down okay leave it like that so you can see if the bleeder is actually turning or if it's just twisting and it's gonna snap do it very gentle as soon as you are able to move it 
to undo a little bit just go back and tie it again and just goes like that use plenty of um, uh, uh, WD-40 until it starts to go this is already done so we're gonna use this one to empty the reservoir and then we'll go back into the pump to replace the unit okay so there is a slightly change of plans I'm gonna change the whole unit the whole unit is out now uh, to take the unit out <sighs> okay so you need to release this pipe completely to give you room to move it a little bit that way obviously all the pipes are out um, you need to take the headlamp. To take the headlamp, you just need to release the bumper. There's a screw on the corner there, right here, behind. Then you just release these. There's a few clips around. There's a few uh, clips around here as well, and just drop it all the way down. Then you have a bolt here on the side, and you have one here right underneath, which you need to pull the bumper down to get the socket underneath there. Uh, unplug everything that will come out. Now the reason why I can't just remove the motor, or another motor, just the block is because, look, this is the bracket, okay, and look, the block, as you can see, is secured underneath. So I would have, I could never take just the block, it was, it would be impossible. So this was the only way to take it off, was take the wall thing out, which is out now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the other unit back together, give it a clean before I put it back together, obviously, and uh, take this one out, put the, the other one in, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I haven't finished the off yet, um, but the pump is in place, uh, all the lines are connected and tightened, and obviously the electrical plug is back in place. and. Uh, just before I waste any more time because obviously that was a second-hand unit before I go any further we're gonna turn the ignition on we're gonna scan the car and see if the codes goes away um, they should you don't need oil in there to test it electrically um, just it's just the pump is gonna do her own check as you turn the ignition on and it's gonna tell us if there is a fault in there or not so where did I put the key? Somewhere here. Okay, so let's kind of turn the ignition on. And I can see straight away. Okay, so they came back on. The VSA. Oil level is low. That's probably why that's on. We're just gonna check the codes, see what's in there. Okay, so I've just scanned the car. Uh, it seems that we have uh, good news. So the the pressure sensor fault is gone now. Obviously, we have all this here, but we're gonna just want to see live data, see if we have pressure in there now, or if we have at least not that. Uh, where is that one? Uh, Oh, we still have an A. Maybe because there's no oil pressure in there. So let's go now. Okay, my my my. You shouldn't you shouldn't need oil in there. But uh, let's gonna put some oil in there and uh, see 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 how it goes. Okay, so I put some oil on it. I believe that was the only problem was the oil. So we're gonna, as you can see, the lights are off now. Uh, let me put that down here, maybe. It's gonna put it here. Let's gonna delete these codes. Enough, yes, it is. Okay, uh, turn the ignition switch off. It's off. Back on. Let's gonna turn it back on and see what happens. So, no lights, let's just do another scan, no faults detected. So that pump is good, all I'm going to do now 
is bleed the brakes. Uh, I don't think I need to go through how to bleed the brakes with you guys. Uh, I don't even think there is a function here. Function test. There is one for to bleed the brakes. If there is, that will be spot on. No, there isn't. Uh, service. No. No. Maintenance. I don't think he's gonna have one, uh, the facility to bleed the brakes, so we're gonna have to do that old fashioned. Um, anyway, guys, uh, I think that's it for the video now. Um, so, uh, this doesn't support. So, um, so yeah, we have sorted the problem. Uh, no more VSA light. Uh, nevertheless, that's a second hand pump. We don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, it, it, might, it might fail in the future. Uh, the best option on this, if you have this problem, guys, is send the pump to repair. Um, you usually get a lifetime warranty with it, which is for that problem, obviously, uh, which is peace of mind. Uh, it's not that expensive. Uh, hopefully, you can get it done. Returning your pump or send your pump uh, about 150 quid just over there. So it's not that expensive. Uh, so that's it. Um, what else to say? Um, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope there's some information here that you guys are gonna find it useful. Um, and that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Any comments, suggestions, whatever, just put them below. And like always, thank you so much for watching.